the signs are unmistakable. We were warned in 1998 with LTCM when the world came hours away from financial collapse. We were warned again in 2008 when financial collapse came critically close. Now, yet again, the world is on the brink. Using science-based complexity modeling, we can see the next financial crisis will be the most massive of them all. The elites have a plan for the next crisis, and it doesn't involve you, only your wealth. That is what Jim Rickard's new book, The Road to Ruin, is about. But before we get to the elite's plan, how can we actually be sure another crisis is coming? Let me give you a quick story to illustrate. In the medieval age, astronomers were trying to predict the movements of the planets and the stars, but their predictions were inconsistent. Sometimes they were right, and sometimes they were wrong. They kept updating their equations to correct for their past errors, but kept producing inconsistent results. Until Copernicus came along and said, in effect, you're using the wrong model. The sun is at the center of the universe, not the earth. With this new model, the stars aligned with our predictions. The story today is chillingly similar. The financial establishment is using outdated financial models like value at risk and the bell curve. Jim argues that the market actually resembles a complex system, with independent actors responding to market feedback and adjusting their behavior accordingly. Using this model, in 2007, Jim was able to see the 2008 crisis coming. And using this model again today, we're able to see that a massive financial crisis isn't looming, but is in the process of arriving. Unfortunately, complexity theory cannot tell us precisely when the next crisis will arrive, but it does tell us that the system is starting to wobble out of control. This is just like how a spinning top will begin to wobble with increased violence just before it spins out of control. And the evidence for this economic wobbling isn't hard to come by. On the one side we have the natural pressures of deflation from technology, demographics, and deleveraging. On the other we have the artificial pressures of inflation from the central banks fighting with interest rates, forward guidance, and of course quantitative easing. And adding to all of this, amazingly, is a dollar shortage, due to a slow but accelerating liquidation. While it's somewhat of a fool's errand to search for an exact trigger that will lead to a collapse, equivalent to searching for a single snowflake that will cause an avalanche, Jim Rickards points out a few of the most likely areas the trigger could come from, including the physical gold sector, various types of debt going bad, a geopolitical confrontation, or even just a bad natural disaster. So what will happen when a trigger finally pushes the system to wobble out of control and causes a full-blown financial crisis? Well don't worry, the financial and monetary elites have seen this crisis coming for a while, and they have a plan, which they have silently slid into the US legal code what Jim Rickards refers to as ICE-9. But before we talk about ICE-9, let's talk about what the elites know. The elites know the current international monetary system is unsustainable, and that this recovery is artificial. When the next crisis arrives, they plan on using the shock doctrine, a tactic Jim explains in the book, to get the IMF's SDR to replace the dollar as the world's new reserve currency. In all likelihood, this crisis will be too massive to paper over. So what is the solution? ICE-9. The ICE-9 protocols will have the effect of locking you out from accessing your own cash. ICE-9 can be applied to shutting down stock exchanges preventing buying and selling, preventing you from accessing your money market account, limit how much cash you can withdraw from ATMs or close them entirely. In short, ICE-9 says, you can't have your money right now, we'll get back to you. In effect, shutting down almost anything financial. The goal of ICE-9 is to freeze the system in place and buy time while the elites implement their plan for a new international monetary system. Then the system can be released from its lockdown state. As Jim documents, ICE-9 isn't a theory, but is already set up and ready to be activated. Many of you may be thinking that 
This kind of stuff happens in Cyprus and Greece and other third world countries, but not here. But you'd be wrong. In fact, Ice Nine used to be the default option for America, used in the panics of 1907, 1914, 1929, 1939, and 1971. In fact, it's only been since around the 70s that we've started injecting liquidity as the solution. So Jim Rickards asks the obvious question. Will Ice-9 buy the elites enough time? With trust in government at fresh lows, how likely are people simply to accept Ice-9 protocols? Will people riot demanding access to their money? And if they do, what would the government's response be to money riots after 16 years of militarized buildup from the war on terror? Whatever it is, it's likely not going to be pretty. Of course, the most important thing isn't what will likely happen, but rather what you can do to brace yourself. Near the end of the book, Jim Rickards recalls a meal with an old wealthy Italian family in Italy. This family had preserved their wealth through 31 generations, or 800 years, of markets ups and downs, through epidemics and even pandemics like the Black Death, countless local, national, and even two world wars. Jim asked a simple, but insightful question. How does a family keep its wealth for so long? It defies the odds. There must be a secret. There is. Buy the things that last. Hey guys, it's Nick. I'll leave it to Jim to tell you exactly what the things that last are in the book as he does a wonderful job of it, but honestly the whole book is an awesome read. My favorite part is when he explained how to use something called Bayesian statistics so you can get an information edge on any of your competitors. Really fascinating stuff. You can buy the book and support the channel by using my Amazon affiliate link which gets me a little kickback and enables me to make more awesome videos for you guys. If you like books on history, economics, or big ideas, then let me send you an email when I post a new video. You can sign up on my website, thenickwright.com forward slash email, or by subscribing to my YouTube channel. Till the next video, I'll see you guys.